precious God, you are our everything. You are the sun, you are the moon, you are the water, you are the wind. Oh God, you are great and greatly to be praised. We will praise you, oh Lord, from the bottom of our hearts to the depth of our souls, from the proud of our heads to the soles of our feet. God, you are worthy of our praise. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, and we ask, for oh Lord, that you will speak to us, speak clearly to us, speak to the point of our need, speak correction where it is needed, speak deliverance where it is needed, speak redemption to us, oh God. We adore you and we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said, Praise, 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 praise. Amen. 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 As you, as you uh, turn your Bibles to, the, uh, to Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, or you can look at the book of Genesis, the same thing. Uh, I want to remind you that next Sunday, next Sunday at 4 p.m., the Pastors and Ministers Alliance is asking us to join them at Union Baptist Church at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Amen. So please come out and join us for the MLK service Sunday at 4 p.m. at Union Baptist Church. Isaiah 43. Beginning at verse 1, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. That's enough right there for us to shout all the way home. Amen. When you through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's another one that ought to have you running down the aisle. Egypt as your rats and Ethiopia and Sheba in exchange for you. Because now check out verse 4. But just in case that nobody told you later. Because you are precious. Precious. Stop worrying about trying to be uh, precious to, 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 to Pookie and them. <laughs> Because you are precious in the sight of God. And yes, yeah, not trying to get folks to honor you because you honor in the sight of God. Because God loves you. Oh my goodness, I'm to be really doing uh, uh, one of those, uh, whatever, tumbles or something. Y'all will be flipping down the aisle. Ideas, people in return for you, nations in exchange for your yeah. life. Do not fear, for I am with you. Amen. How many times have you been told, don't worry about it? We are often admonished or encouraged with these words. We know perhaps instinctively that worry and faith do not belong together. Right. Nevertheless, Homiletics Magazine, in the discussion for today's passage, which is our text, says that these four words, don't worry about it, are in combination with each other, possibly the most useless words in the English language. The magazine contends that this advice is useless because it is routinely ignored. We all have our personal list of things we worry about. And Lord knows if you watch the news or listen to people talk, you will soon be convinced that danger is lurking around every corner. 
and you are just one short but inevitable step away from catastrophe. There's always a new disease. There's always something going on. The, uh, we are in the midst of a government of uh, 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 record long government shutdown. We are in a trade war with China. The markets are volatile. One day up, next day down. And our congressman thought it was okay to embrace white supremacy. And we still have a president who thinks that division is better than unity. I guess if you want to get somebody's attention, you need to give them something to worry about. Fortunately, fortunately for us, the, uh, the only news we have or hear is not news from the media. The news we get on or through the media largely often serves the purpose of making us anxious. After all, have y'all ever watched the news? They don't leave with the nice stories about the dog about being found or somebody being nice. No, they say if it bleeds, it leaves. Oh, we want a murder. We want something like that. Yeah, we want some bad news to start our day. Let the church say amen. And you know, uh, uh, it only serves the purpose of just making us anxious. And I never like, I never like being anxious. But once I find out the root of the word, I really, really don't want to be anxious again. Because did you know that the etymology of the word anxious is from a Latin word that means to strangle? Yes. If you are anxious or worried, it will choke the life out of you. But the prophet Isaiah has a word from the Lord for us today. Uh, yes, those four words that Homiletic Magazine says are possibly the most useless words in the English language. Don't worry about it. And those words, that's what the word is this morning. Don't worry about it. And I know that sounds easy enough to say, but there is life in those words if you will hear it. There is life in those words if you will hear it. Not just with your ears, but with your heart and your soul. Yeah. Because it's not Pastor Daddy saying, don't worry about it. It's the word of God saying, don't worry about it. But if you will hear it, and instead of choking, you will find yourself breathing easier. Let's look at the situation in the text to which the prophet Isaiah speaks. The word of this text comes from uh, the writing of the prophet in what's called second. Isaiah. And we need to hear now this message of the prophet. It has been said that the message of, uh, uh, of Second Isaiah is of no age. It was true when it was written. It, is, it was true in our past. And it is still true. And it will be forever true in the future. Yeah. This is prophecy tempered with human tears, mixed with joy that heals all sorrow. And this word from Isaiah clears the way for understanding the future in spite of the present. This is the word from God that offers comfort when the sick world cries. In the writings of Isaiah, the second Isaiah part anyway, the situation in which the Jewish people find themselves is neither robust nor secure. A large segment of the population of Judah now dwells as captives and exiles. They are faced with devastation, distress and death. The temple was destroyed, Jerusalem was in ruins, and their liberty was lost. Now, what would you say, right, or say under these circumstances? Isaiah challenges the people here, in spite of how things seem, or how matters seem, to keep the faith and to stand on the promises of God. And this is not an insignificant message. It is more than just touch your name and say, my victory is on the way. Yeah, no, it's more than that. It's, a, it's more than a panacea of present pain. We read in chapter 42 uh, that the situation in which Israel finds herself is the result of the nation's refusal to obey God's law. The nation has pushed past boundaries. But as a demonstration of how boundaries are situational, God's grace makes that so. The message of chapter 43 is one that is a message of hope from Isaiah. And the reason for this hope is that God is in covenant 
with us. Yes. Notice I said covenant, yes. not contract. A, a contract can be nullified if one party breaks the agreed terms. Yes. But a covenant is God's way of saying that no matter what, I am going to be with you. Yes. God is in covenant relationship with us. And we know this because in spite of Israel and our stubborn refusal to obey God's law, chapter 43 begins with these hopeful words. But now, in spite of what happened or took place before this, God, just like the decision between 42 and 43, starts a new chapter. But now, I don't care what you did yesterday. But now, I don't care what's going on right now. But now, God is about to do something because regardless of how we behave or how we respond, God keeps promises and we can stand on those promises. Amen. And we need to hear this, brothers and sisters, in 2019, just like Israel did, because like them, we've been through some tough times. And it's important to remember that Isaiah is written from the perspective of exile. But the prophet says, we may be captives and exiles. We may be in a bad situation right now, but we have not forgotten God's promise. We have had some trouble, but God, according to the prophet, says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire you shall not be burned and the flames shall not consume you. I see the use of fire and water often uh, is used in scripture to denote calamity and danger. Water because it overwhelms and fire because it consumes. And I'm sure there's some enemies who thought that we wouldn't get out of the mess that we found. Largest percentage in the history of the vote. 
there were 440 votes cast, and out of those 437, 99.3% were cast for him. who didn't vote for Kevin Griffey Jr. But I got to give uh, Brother Griffey some credit. He brushed off the controversy when he says, it's one of those things I cannot control. Yes, I can control how I play, I can control how I do things, but I cannot control what other folk do. When I read his comments on this matter, it changed my mind and made me ask some different questions. When I thought about it, I asked myself, why in the world would you get upset over the few people who couldn't stop you from giving your ultimate victory? That's the word, somebody ought to write that down. Why are you worried about some folk who can't stop you from what God has for you? Why do you get upset just because everybody ain't praising your name? You ought to say, thank you, Lord. I got the victory in Jesus Christ. In the fact that everybody wasn't on my side, I still got the victory. Why do you about the few people who said you couldn't win after you already won? Why bother the state of protest against people who said you couldn't do something after you did what they said? for teaching me this lesson. Don't get caught up in the negative. Yes, so victory is already ours. So let us celebrate. Instead of bragging about those who thought we would die, we need to praise God for our lives. We need to remember that the water did not drown us. The fire did not consume us. The way I have, the way we have to carry does not trust us. The lies that were told of us proved false. The darkness we walked through did not discourage us. And the journey that we had to take did not tire us. The trials we had to endure made us stronger. And our failures after our best efforts did not leave us feeling dejected. Because I learned uh, what Winston Church, that Winston Churchill was right when he said success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Sometimes in the midst of your trouble, brother, in the midst of your trial, sister, you gotta learn how to keep on praising God. Every day ain't gonna be a good day. Every day ain't gonna be a good day.
Come to New Life today. The doors are open. Won't you come? 